If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, a very interesting video today. We're going to watch a Christian apologetics lady talking to a Muslima about if Allah loves women. This is, of course, a very prevalent misconception in the West. Muslim women usually are covered. And because they are covered, they are seen as somebody that is oppressed. In the West, you're oppressed if you're wearing decent clothing, if you're wearing modest clothing. You are just liberated if you take your clothes off. And because the Westerners see the covering as oppressive, this is why they then in turn have to ask the question, does Allah even love women? Before we jump into the video, guys, do me the favor so we make it out of the shadow ban like the video subscribe to the channel share it if you can and check out the links in the description box below with no further ado let's have a look yeah so i want to ask you madam what's your f islam islam were you born muslim yeah Mashallah. okay so yeah i wanted to discuss about jesus like what do you believe about jesus jesus is the prophet of allah Okay. Yeah, messenger and okay. prophet of Allah. Okay. But what, what, ha, um, what do you think he came to do down on earth? Because the the story in the Quran the and the Bible is different. Yes, uh, he came to you know preach uh, uh, his nation of that time about the Deen Islam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, for me, it's a bit confusing <laughs> I, I, yeah. because I wasn't born Christian. I'm, I'm open-minded about different religions, no, but the kind of um, you're here to you evangelize. Know, um, Jesus never mentioned anyone called Allah or any place uh, called Arabia. So Christians nowadays are so oblivious to who Jesus Christ truly was. He came from the Middle East, man. He came from Palestine. And moreover, let's give the Christians a quick lesson. Look how easy this is, dear Christians. You just open up Google and you Google what language did Jesus speak? Then you see it was Aramaic. Now the next thing you have to do is simply Google how do you say God in Aramaic and you find out it is Elah. Elah, Elah, Allah. Coincidence? Christians nowadays really believe that Jesus said God, the Father, Matthew, Mark and John and Luke. He was not a white guy. He spoke a Semitic language that is very similar to Hebrew and Arabic. Consider there could be a chance perhaps that the Jesus in Islam is she a different a Jesus. Breath, uh, objectively, because I know you're Muslim, but objectively, because the stories are very different. Very objective, different, not yes. based upon the you know, Bible. Uh, objectively. In uh, Christianity, as far as I know, they say that uh, Jesus was uh, crucified. Yeah. But in Islam, we believe that he has been, uh, you know, uh, Raced. he has been, um, what could I say? Uh, in English, uh, like he has been picked up by Allah, yeah. like he, he is uh, somewhere in, um, I don't know, heaven. Like, in heaven, you know, uh, somewhere in heaven. But when the end of time came, like you know, near the time of uh, when everything will be finished, uh, we say uh, the doom day. Mm -hmm. When the world is finished, before that, Isa um, alayhi salam. Uh, Jesus will come back to this uh, uh, this world and he will come as a normal person not a prophet normal person yes and, and let me know in the comment section guys does he come back as a normal person I thought he comes back as the Messiah and that will be the sign of you know um, uh, what we say sign of uh, end of uh, everything like you know end of time mm -hmm. yes so we we believe that jesus is with the father as well so in that um you know we believe god is the father and then he has a son and the holy spirit so we believe that jesus um is in heaven as well and we believe jesus is coming back but we also believe that he was crucified and resurrected and this is crucial to our faith do you know why madam crucial. christians believe no that jesus intended. was crucified i don't have that much knowledge by the way that's that okay i don't have that much knowledge yeah but only I have little bit knowledge because still yeah. I am, you know, a learning person, you can say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, sorry, my is Bible is Bible? actually. I need to get a new cover because I read, I read it a lot, so it's very. <laughs> but, but we but don't. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. And, no respect and for the book uh, about at all. that, mm -hmm. we also believe as a Muslim. We also yeah. believe uh, the you know that books have been sent by Allah. That uh -huh. is Bible inclusive. The Injil. Injil. Uh -huh. Bible Torah. She yeah. already knows. By, She's uh, pretending not to know. I'm having and an open discussion with the Muslim. Well. <laughs> I can't remember the uh -huh. name. But we do believe. We do be the, the Psalms, I think. Yeah. So you, so I you, think. I mean, this is, a, this is interesting. You said many things. I mean, um, to touch on the first thing we mentioned is we believe that Jesus Christ was crucified, not for no reason, but it's because to take on the sins of the world. That's the reason why okay. he was crucified. Yeah, that's what we differ. That. Yeah, you never heard of this. this, this is, we don't believe this that. Is all I heard that he was crucified in, in your religion, yeah. but I don't have that much knowledge. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was crucified, um, you know, because they believed that he was God, but also to take on the sins of the whole world. Um, and, um, and also in terms of the Torah, the, um, the Gospel and the Psalms, your Quran confirms this, so would you say that you have to believe in this? Yeah, this is a major misconception with Christian evangelicals. They believe that we as Muslims are commanded to believe in the Torah and in the Bible the way that they are nowadays. That is not the case whatsoever. We as Muslims do believe that God has revealed scripture, of course. However, some of them got lost, some of them got corrupted. We don't know every single scripture that God has sent down, nor do we know every single prophet that God has sent down. The only thing we know as Muslims Muslims, that the Quran is the word of God that has been preserved. And even if you look at it from a historical standpoint, if you look at it from a scholarly standpoint, you will see that the scholars will agree, not only Muslim scholars, Christians, atheists alike, they will agree that the Quran has been preserved and the Bible has not been preserved. Therefore, when the Quran speaks about the scriptures that have been sent down, the Quran speaks about that exact time when the scriptures have been revealed, when they haven't been obstructed. This cannot apply to the Bible. As I said, from a secularist perspective, we already know that the Bible has been corrupted. And of course, Islam agrees with that standpoint as well. The Bible is not preserved in its original form. And this is why the Quran does not speak about the Bible, Biblios, but speaks about the Injil, a specific message that was sent to Jesus for his people at the time. That's what we believe it, Quran yeah. will remain same you know until the end of time you know exactly. yeah. and, and, and um, until what you say the doomsday or everything will be finished yeah. this whole world will be finished yeah but you know many people say that many changes has been made you know yeah. in these things yeah so they are not in their real form yeah exactly. but this, this is what the Muslim people say but um, you know you you know this is not true I want to say because we have a Bible from uh, even in, in London there is a Bible in the British Museum yeah. from the fourth century some before Mohammed and all the Bible so how is this an argument you say there is a Bible in the British Museum that came 400 years after Jesus Christ I rest my case and this is roughly 200 years before Mohammed came May peace be upon them both. Prophet Muhammad received the revelation that dismantles Christianity with their claims about the Trinity, etc. How is this an argument? Yet again, that Bible is written in which language? If you look into the New Testament, if you're lucky, it is written in Greek. But as we already established, the language of Jesus was Aramaic. So why don't we find the New Testament, the Gospel, in Aramaic? The reason being because there is is none. We don't have any Aramaic scripture. Moreover, we don't know who the authors of the New Testament are. Those are anonymous authors. Yet again, do you really believe they're called Luke, John, Matthew, etc., etc., you name it? Of course not. Those are synonyms, and those authors were Greek, philosophers potentially, because the followers of Christ were fishermen. They were not intellectuals. They wouldn't have been able to write the Gospels. Therefore, the question still remains, who who wrote the gospel and moreover especially crucial here crucial is 
what was the true message of Jesus Christ? What was the Injil? Yes, yes. that Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected. And you know, your Quran confirms the Bible, and your Quran says that Allah's word cannot oh. be changed. Do you agree with this? Yes, oh Allah's words cannot be changed in Quran. Your Bible warns exactly against that. Your Bible says that there have been people that twisted the words of God, and Jesus Christ himself, may peace be upon him, talks to the Pharisees. The Pharisees have apparently introduced man-made traditions into God's words. This is why Jesus fights off the Pharisees. That's the whole point. So therefore, we see that back in the day, people twisted God's words. This has happened over and over and over again. And this is why the Quran came as the final message that cannot be changed to preserve pure monotheism, a pure submission to one God alone i.e. Islam. But no, even they don't want to get it, man. But it doesn't say in the Bible that the Bible was corrupt. You know, no, oh uh, you know, I'm not in the position of saying because my knowledge is limited. No, it's okay, me too. I'm not a teacher. I'm just yes. having a conversation, obviously. As a so no, it's okay. I don't really have knowledge either, but let's just pretend we both do and let's just talk about whatever we want. No, of course not. Within Islam, it is a grave sin to say something wrong about Islam. We have respect of our religion and therefore we don't want to say anything wrong. You should have enough respect of Christianity as well to not say anything wrong. Uh, but they don't care. What I'm cares? telling I know so yeah. far. Okay, me too. I'm not a teacher. I'm just but they don't care. Oh, well, who cares? Let's we'll just say whatever this we is think. What I'm telling whatever we feel. I know so yeah. far and I know, like, you know, um, yeah. about my religion, even your religion, Christianity. Don't know much about Christianity, but a yeah. little bit. Yeah, I mean, so Jesus Christ, we believe that he is the son of God and he we came don't. into the flesh. And, uh, you know, he actually is God that came to speak to us. <laughs> what and is this is why it's powerful because, son for example, Allah, he never came, he never entered creation according to your belief. But Jesus, he entered creation and he spoke to people. And even before he was born, because we don't believe he was Yeah, clear. just like the other prophets that God has sent. All of them spoke to us about the message of one God. When he was born, we yeah. believe that he came before as well. He, in the Torah, I can show you, he appeared to people. To okay. You believe show in me. Ibrahim, we call yeah. him Abraham. You believe in Musa, we call him Moses. Moses These yeah. people, they met, they actually met Jesus. <laughs> is in the Bible. Yeah, there's absolutely no proof for that whatsoever. This is just an outrageous claim that Christians make. They go throughout the Torah and then based upon the perception of having to find a trinity, they then assume that all the prophets that were in contact with God were actually in contact with Jesus. Case closed. So Doesn't we make believe any sense. that he was born um, to die and the reason why they put him to no, death is because he claimed to be God and the, the gospel is that we believe that by his blood um, you know, um, you know, our sins are washed away by his blood. It's a supernatural thing. Yeah, it's definitely a supernatural thing. And point being is, we do not believe that and we never will. In our religion, we believe that God is the most merciful. Hence, we do not believe that he has to sacrifice his own son, nor that he has to sacrifice anybody for that matter, for us to be saved. We sin, we have to account for our sins. Is this too logical for you? And that you receive wow. forgiveness and the Holy Spirit. And this is the gospel. And the gospel never changed. You know, the gospel. What is the Holy Spirit for if God had to send his son that died for us? Why do you then have to send the Holy Spirit? This is there for, um, you know, it's been there for 2,000 years. And this is what the prophets were looking forward to. And for um, unfortunately, the, the you know, mo um, Mohammed, we understand that he was a messenger, but um, so you do understand he, that he was messenger. He doesn't worship the same God. It was we believe that he was deceived, you know, because the portrayal of Jesus in the Quran is completely different. And um, you know, <laughs> when you say that. Um, yeah, just say it right away. The point being here is that she is not coming with an honest discussion. She's not really seeking truth. No, she comes to evangelize. Obviously, she's an evangelical. Therefore, this is very tiresome to watch because she's not truly debating with the woman, trying to understand her position. No, she already has her talking points. Oh, Muhammad was deceived. It's not the same God. And Jesus never knew Allah. It's always the same bunk, man. Passive, aggressive, emotional BS. 
Just go there, tell her right away, hey, listen, I believe that Jesus Christ is God. I do not believe in Islam and I want to promote my message. But you do not do that. So therefore, you are what Jesus warned us about. You are a wolf in sheep's clothing. Correct. And I hear many Muslims say this, pathetic. but they don't have an original copy of the Injil or the Torah. Only some mufti, some scholar can, you know, answer you these questions. Yeah. Because yeah. And, uh, about Jesus, no. let me tell you what he yeah. says so far I know in the Quran. Yeah. He was, uh, Jesus, or uh, Isa alayhi salam, was yeah. born without a father to Maryam. Or you call in your, uh, you know, Bible Mary. Yeah, so can I ask you, when he was born without his father, who was the father of him? Yeah, gotcha. When Adam was created without a father, who was Adam's father? He never Man. had a father. Kindergarten. But he was the one who was born, like, you know, without a father. Okay. Like, you know, um... He um, was created. I That's do it. not have much knowledge, but all I know is that... It's okay, madam, you have some... Ba like, I have basic knowledge as well. Yes. I'm not expecting you... Um, but and uh, since English is not my first language, what's your so first was, language? My first language is Urdu, Pashto. Urdu, Pashto. Pashto, yeah. Pashto. So you're Afghanistan? Uh, no, I'm from Pakistan. Pakistan. Uh, from oh, Northwest, yes, KPK. Oh, okay. I'm from Swat Valley. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, okay. I don't care so where you're I'm from. I just want to read on my phone Sorry? what I'm going to tell you Malala, next. Ah, uh, Malala. I've heard of... I sure. think I've heard of this. Yes. Uh, where, is that where Very Malala is from? The girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or oh, the girl that couldn't study and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I thought she was from Oppressed. Afghanistan. I didn't no, know. no. She was uh, from uh, Swat Valley and it's in KPK. It's in Pakistan. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so um, you speak a little bit of Arabic little bit because for a very long time you know i'd be not uh, speaking arabic yeah so but little bit knowledge yeah so would you agree in from your understanding when you say jesus doesn't have a father yes that ruh was his father he did or was it gabriel the father because how did mary have a baby because something happened to make her become pregnant yes oh. she became do you really believe that God is so limited that he needs a gender, that God truly needs some biological process of birthing? No, it is a miracle. Just as he created Adam without a mother, without a father, then he went on and created Jesus without a father. It is a creation of his. We're talking about God, about a metaphysical being that transcends creation. You must agree with this because prior to creation, God was. He is the only eternal one. He's not bound to time and space. He's not bound to biology as we are. Therefore, if he decides for Jesus to be born through Mary, he will be born through Mary. If he will decide that Jesus will be born without a father, he will be born without a father. And yet again, if he would have wanted Jesus to be born without a mother as well, he could have done that too just as he did with Adam. Why are you so extremely limited? Actually, I do have the answer already because you anthropomorphize everything. God is the Father. Jesus is the Son. We have to understand this. They love each other through the Holy Spirit just like we do. A trinity makes sense, of course. Are you not body, mind, and spirit as well? So is God. No, he is not. He is much greater than anything within creation and he doesn't have to compare himself to us and moreover guess what as limited human beings we shouldn't even expect to fully understand god it is impossible pregnant uh, some people say i don't know uh, i might find it in the quran in the quran says it was rude the, 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 that uh, that man yeah, the spirit of allah yes uh, like you know um in quran it says that you know Anyway, uh, all I know that he was born without a father. Mm -hmm. And many people, you know, pointing like, you know, uh, uh, on uh, Mary, Mariam, mm -hmm. that, you know, how come he born without a father? Mm -hmm. And he was like infant yes, at that time. That's where maybe. the Jews believe so he actually was adulterer. So he speaking even in that time when he was infant. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, by the miracle of Allah, he started speaking and he, you know, uh, testify oneness of Allah mm -hmm. yes so we um, you know we believe that 
um, you know, Jesus, was, he, he, he did have a father in heaven. You know, God is his father. And we believe that the Quran uh, says the same thing, basically. It no, says that the spirit doesn't. of Allah, Ruh, was Ruh. the father. Now, some translation says it was... The Quran never said that Ruh is the father. What are you talking about? Yeah, so we believe that um, the, the spirit of God, you know, the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary and jesus basically you know he, he was he wasn't created he was born and he was sinless now would you agree that jesus was sinless he without a sin he didn't yes. do anything yes. so jesus was the only one that was without a sin all other human where is this going man he was not created he was born so would that then imply that we because we are born as well are not creations of god how does this make any sense whatsoever in your worldview? Does God need to snap his fingers every single time he creates something? No, he created creation. Look around you. And now within creation, there is birth happening. Nevertheless, this, of course, attributed to the creator that created everything around you. Um, you know, going back to uh, the love of God, you know, we believe that Jesus and Christ, he loves us and he died for us to give us eternal life and we don't believe that Allah loves people I don't believe Allah loves women <laughs> okay. because he sends you know that Allah sends most women to hell that's what he says uh, it's because uh, you know uh, it doesn't she's basing this upon a hadith in which yes it states that most inhabitants of hell will be women so how does this now imply that Allah God is simply sending women to hell just for the fun of it of course couldn't this have any deeper meaning other than that God hates women if you look around into modernity into the times that we are living in right now a is rampant. Look at the choices that women make nowadays. Wouldn't those atrocities reserve you a VIP spot in hell? Of course they would. Therefore, yet again, the hadith simply states that most inhabitants of hell are women. You with your feminist worldview, instead of reflecting, hmm, why would that be? Maybe we as women are not obedient enough to God. No, quite the opposite. You're going to flip the script and say, oh, Allah, bad, because he simply sends women to hell. Mean that Allah Ridiculous. is going to send all women to the hell. But he most said, of them Yes, will go. yes, yes. Yeah. Many people yeah. is, you know, yeah. mis, uh, yeah. misunderstood yeah. this. What does that even mean, man? If you enter a room, for example, in that room you have 10 people. Six people are women. Hmm, most of the people are women. Things Allah is because all the women, women are going in the hell because <laughs> of their tongue. You know, we are back. Most of the women are gossiping around people. You know, there you go, for example, true. you are sitting here. I give you the example. I go to someone with hijab and say, look, oh, she is sleeveless and this and that. Mm -hmm. This also put, we are becoming sinful. And because we, are we you. yeah, I mean, uh, I, you know, I, and, I and would say all people do this, you know, all people gossip. Yes. Um, but also, you know, it, it says not, not only this because of a deficiency in mind, because of She's menstruation. Smart. And so for me, if, uh, you know, if Allah was God, you I would go say, to why hell would because it create me as this person who is inferior, crazy? you know, yeah, and uh, you know, you, you deserve half of the inheritance. You, you, you can't have your own husband. So for me, uh, oh, again, man, not even the basic knowledge of Islam, but let's speak about it. Let's evangelize. Listen, as a man in Islam, you need to provide a dowry. You need to give money to the woman that you marry. You need to provide that, right? And then you as a man need to provide further for that woman and for the children, for the whole family. You need to establish a house. You need to establish the household. You need to feed all of them so therefore the responsibility the monetary responsibility is upon you not upon the woman and therefore logically the son will inherit more than the daughter isn't this just obvious because the son will need to provide and the daughter will be provided for the, the, wow, the of the Bible. this is so to, extremely yes. woman, pathetic daughter and uh, woman, daughter, wife, sister, even they have shared in their inheritance. You see the Quran, they have of their course. share. But they get less than the man. Yeah, because, because the, the man needs to provide. Why they less, uh, get the man because they are also getting from husband as well. One exactly. Eight. When husband dies, one eighth of the inheritance she is getting, the rest is distributed among the, you know, children, depending on children. And if the husband has brother, sister, 
that oh, goes to them as I would well. Love yeah. to talk so to we, them in person, um, man. It's so, so ridiculous. But if your husband divorces you, then you don't get. Yes, uh, yes, we get. He has to pay this, this, this much money, either in the form of property or in the form of cash. It's written already, and yeah. he has to give it. But in the case of. Um, but, but, you know, but, 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 but. Alright, oh, this is it for today's video, long enough as it is and for the sake of YouTube guidelines yet again, this video here is over 40 minutes long, therefore I'm going to post the original video in the description box. If you want to check out the whole video, you can head over to the channel Apologetics London and watch the whole thing there. However, for the sake of the response, we're going to cut it off here. As I already mentioned in the beginning, in the West, now it is seen as oppressive if you cover yourself. And we saw the same thing, of course, here with the Christian lady. The Christian lady was not covered the muslima was covered and only if you uncover yourself you become liberated in the west become exactly like us as long as you're covering yourself you are oppressed and allah god hates you he hates you and he will send you to hell because you're menstruating this is the logic of those so-called islamophobes i'm not going to use the term islamophobes any longer those are simply enemies of islam this is truly what they are they come there two-faced with an agenda pretending to really care oh hello what is your religion hoopsie i don't know or oh, do you speak arabic a ruh ruh do you know what it means isn't that the father it is so hypocritical you guys are deceptive snakes truly your own bible warns against you you are the snakes talking with a sweet tongue but in reality you have malicious intent behind this you do not care for islam you hate islam you do not care for that lady you simply want to evangelize your perceived message of Jesus Christ, which it is not. Just look into it. You don't even have to look into Islam to find out that your Bible has been corrupted, that we do not have the original message of Christ. Look into it. Learn about it. Educate yourself first before you open up your mouth about Islam. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you further want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Check the description box. All right, guys, but this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.